Video number eight. So how did William change England? William transformed England in many ways. A key word here is Normanisation. Because in what was known as a Normanisation of England, Anglo-Saxon people, systems and behaviours were replaced with Norman people, systems and behaviours. Often these changes were put in place to centralise William's power. By centralising his power, William gained more power. However, it is important to remember that Anglo-Saxon England was already strong before William came to power. This meant that William didn't have to change every part of Anglo-Saxon society. There were many similarities still between Anglo-Saxon England and Norman England. So, in the exam, be prepared to answer questions both about the changes William actioned and about how much change overall took place. So, how did William change England? One area to look at is the changes he made to land. William gained a lot more control of England through his use of land. William technically owned 80% of land in England, the other 20% being owned by the church. And he was very strategic in how he used this land. He didn't give land away as much as he did lease land to people. This meant that if anyone disobeyed him or if he was displeased with anyone, he could remove their land through forfeiture. So this gave him a lot more power. He rewarded loyal Normans land and removed land from disloyal Anglo-Saxons. And by 1087, only 5% of land was owned by Anglo-Saxons. He also reduced the size of earldoms to make sure nobody could challenge his power as the Godwinsons had challenged Edward the Confessor's power. He created new earldoms around Wales, the three marcher earldoms, to reduce the risk of raids from Welsh princes. He also made sure that children, boys in particular, didn't inherit the land of their fathers when their father died automatically. They had to pay money to William in the form of relief before they were entitled to take over their father's land. This is what happened and was a cause of the 1075 revolt because Roger and Ralph weren't happy with the amount of relief they had to pay to inherit their father's land. They couldn't afford it and only inherited part of that land. So William gained a lot of control through his use of land because it made people dependent upon him. Also, one change William brought about in regards to land was the building of castles. These castles gave him military power and they were all throughout England, such as two in York, one in Lincoln and Windsor Castle in London. Furthermore, William changed land through harrying, especially the harrying of the north. After the rebellions in the north, in revenge for the death of the Norman Robert Cumin, William punished the Anglo-Saxons through the destruction of their land as part of the harrying of the north in 1069. This meant he poured salt into the land, which meant a lot of it couldn't be used for agriculture, leading to starvation. Another area of change was socio-economic. 
William changed the Anglo-Saxon hierarchy to introduce the Norman feudal system. This has links to land because the Norman feudal system was underpinned by William's control of all the land and leasing out land to different people. In the Norman feudal system, William replaced earls, which were Anglo-Saxons generally, with Norman tenants and chiefs. They were far more numerous and they controlled smaller areas of land. They were sometimes known as barons rather than tenants and chiefs. William also replaced Anglo-Saxon thanes with Norman knights. Norman knights became William's army alongside mercenaries, so there was no longer a need for the Anglo-Saxon feud. The knights had to be released by their tenants and chiefs 40 days a year to fight in William's army. William also made nearly all peasants tied to the land. This removed the free peasants, the chaos. The Normans also disliked slavery, so slavery was gradually removed from the Norman feudal system. William also ordered the carrying out of a major survey of land and possessions. This was called the Doomsday Book. The Doomsday Book was completed just one year, 1085 to 1086, and it gave William a lot more control. Because he fully understood the ownership of land and key possessions, William was able to accurately charge geld tax and he was also able to accurately identify how many knights each baron should provide him and this provided him with extra security because he was worried about an attack from Scandinavia, from the Vikings. So he needed to know how strong his army would be and how many extra mercenaries, paid soldiers, he would need. Also, there were changes to trade. There was more trade with Normandy and less trade with Scandinavia. Also, the language changed. Anglo-Saxon, English, was blended with Norman French as the Norman nobles, the aristocracy, often refused to learn Anglo-Saxon English. For example, William never learnt it. So, the language of England gradually changed. Another area of change was law. William designated much land as forest land. 33% of all southern England was now called a forest according to the Normans. All of Essex became a forest and the new forest in Hampshire was created. This forest land was the personal hunting land of William and any tenants and chiefs he gave permission to hunt on that land. This had a massive impact on peasants especially. Because of the forest laws, peasants weren't allowed to hunt in the forests, nor were they allowed to collect firewood. Furthermore, if they lived in a forest area, they were often told to move. For example, 2,000 people were told to move when the new forest in Hampshire was created. The punishments for breaking the forest law were incredibly harsh, such as blinding. Now, this meant that the peasants said that William cared more about his hunting animals than them because many of the peasants were suffering from lack of food and weren't allowed to hunt the animals in the forest. Furthermore, the role of 
the sheriff changed. In Anglo-Saxon England, the sheriff was called a Shire Reeve. In Norman England, they became known as a sheriff. And Norman sheriffs were even more hated than Anglo-Saxon sheriffs. This is because their role became more punitive, more based on punishment, that means, because they were people alongside forest officials that enforced the forest laws. Moreover, William had direct control of the sheriffs and told the sheriffs to collect the guild tax. And he also allowed the sheriffs to keep a percentage of the guild tax, which meant the sheriffs it was in their own interest to collect a lot of tax because they would then have more money. This made them very unpopular. Were responsible for defending a shire and were responsible for the new Norman castles, which were also unpopular. So the role of the shire reef changed the role of a sheriff and they became more unpopular in Norman England. Finally, Law changed in regards to the fines paid when someone was murdered. In Anglo-Saxon England, Weirgild, otherwise known as blood money, was paid to the family of the victim by the murderer or the family of the murderer. In Norman England, that money went directly to the king and a murderum fine was set up which meant that the money was that was paid was a lot higher if the person murdered was a Norman. A final set of changes were those to do with the church. The church was Normanized. The Archbishop Stigand was replaced with Lanfranc and Lanfranc who was the Archbishop of Canterbury was now placed in sole control of the church. Whereas before, in Anglo-Saxon England, the Archbishop of Canterbury had shared control with the Archbishop of York. Now it was just Lanfranc in control. The rest of the clergy were then Normanized. For example, by 1088, all bishops were Norman, other than one, Wolfstan. Alongside this, Langfranc introduced major changes to try to clean up the church and end corruption. For example, he banned simony and pluralism, which was to do with selling church jobs and positions or having more than one church job or position. He reduced nepotism, which is giving church jobs or roles to your friends or family. He also enforced celibacy for um, priests. So priests could no longer get married. They were told that they should be married only to God. More monasteries in the north of England to encourage monks to study and encourage the teaching of moral behaviour and getting rid of sinfulness as monks in monasteries studied and prayed. Finally, there was a normalisation of church buildings as every church and cathedral, like the one at Lincoln, were rebuilt in the Norman style. But we do need to remember that some things did stay the same in Norman England. For example, most people were still peasants and their concerns were mainly about the harvest and feeding themselves. The excellent Anglo-Saxon administrative structure of shires and hundreds was still kept. The Witten remained and was called by William when he wanted the advice of the tenants in chief when he was facing a Danish invasion in 1085. Based on the system of earldoms, shires and hundreds, the guild tax remained, making sure the king was wealthy. William also kept the Anglo-Saxon idea of collective responsibility for crime and the hue and cry to catch criminals. So overall, William centralised his power through the Normanisation of England, but didn't change everything.